Ladies and gents, I am back. Yeah. Lots of things got in the way of me making videos, but I am back. And back at the start, or soon to be the start, of this MLS season. Uh, so you will see more of these MLS weekly updates. Uh, you know, my weekend reviews will be back in order. Uh, you will also see some interesting little tidbits here and there on how I think the Timbers are doing. So to get started, let's get with a Timbers uh, preview. One thing I did not do uh, was a Timbers... I, 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 this, this simple fact that we now have this star over our logo after last season. I did a video after the FC Dallas match and... or going over the FC Dallas match because I was there uh, the last home game of the season for the Timbers and which we won pretty handily ended up winning that ended up going on winning our next series since we were in the Western Conference Finals we ended up beating the Columbus crew yes it was in fact two to one uh, so fan freaking tastic I, I I'd it was after I had some issues with uh, recording, and I got a new camera. The sound didn't work the way I wanted to. I could go into those details. Some of you already know those details. I got sick. My work schedule changed. <sighs> so I had to do a lot to basically get back to this point. But going forward, we will continue. Uh, to be doing this going forward. You'll see me at matches, you will see um, more of the reviews, etc., as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh, well, yeah, MLS Cup win. Second trophy in the, basically, the pro sports history of Portland in general. And, you know, the Trailblazers did it in 72, 73... Something like that. Don't quote me. Uh, I was then in that range when they beat Philly uh, back when they had Bill Walton and such as underdogs came back, won that series. Uh, and really, we it, it, it feels great to be the first Cascadia team uh, to win MLS Cup. It gives us a sense of pride as well as a sense of, uh, you know, being kings of Cascadia ultimately yeah deal with it anywho past my ramblings we have we're gonna look at what guys have left we're gonna look at uh, at least left the timbers this year we're gonna look at who they've added and whether they've covered up those needs we'll go over my questions of what I have for this season uh, and we'll also get a kind of look at our lineup prediction and how that's generally going to look uh, it's one of those situations where we lost a lot of key guys that really added to our depth and wondering whether we actually replace that depth and where I see that going forward. So let's get into it. Uh, guys we lost after 2015. Uh, Will Johnson traded to Toronto for allocation money and a draft pick. Uh, Paparato, one of our key backup center backs, Traded, or not traded, he stayed in Argentina. We did not re-sign him. Jorge Villafania traded to Santos Laguna of Liga MX. Uh, he's actually doing a halfway decent job over there, too. Definitely check them out. Uh, they just won their first match in the CONCACAF Champions League. Um, or at least of it being back in 2016. So, check him playing for them. Uh, Rodney Wallace, we did not come to an agreement on a contract, so he will be back 
No, he will not be back. Excuse me. He went to uh, FC Aroca. You guys can help me with pronunciations. Uh, but they're out of Portugal. Maxwell Ruti entered the uh, redraft of guys who have been in MLS for a while. Uh, and because he, he was kind of tired of not starting. And, you know, to a certain extent, right, extent rightfully so. We'll miss the guy. Uh, but he got drafted by FC Dallas. So that was great for FC Dallas and terrible for us. Um, and we also lost one of our young stars, or one up-and-coming stars, I would say, in George Foshive. Uh, you know, a great defense, or becoming a great defensive midfielder. He went to Viborg FF out of the Danish Superliga. Uh, signed with them over there after having a little bit of a loan stint. So... Hey, you know, F, that's a lot of guys that we have to replace. Will Johnson was one of our main leaders as this squad came into being over the past five years. Helped bring us into uh, really our form. He was one of the catalysts for our Western Conference Finals run uh, two years ago in 2013. So we'll be missing him dearly. Also... You know, it leaves a spot open at left back with losing Jorge Villafania, and we have to figure out what we're going to be doing in our attacking third, uh, specifically at winger, by losing Rodney Wallace. So, let's look at who we added. We added Chris Clute of Columbus Crew fame. Uh, we also added Jack McInerney from Columbus, also played with Montreal last season for a bit. We added Jermaine Taylor, uh, former Houston Dynamo defender. Added Zarek Valentin. Yeah, at some point I'll learn how to pronounce his name going forward once we see him play a few times. Former Shivas USA player. Uh, played for Montreal for a while. Recently uh, came out of Bodo Glimt of Norway. Uh, that was his last club. And then we just added also Ned Grabavoy. Yeah, I probably mispronounced his name too. Sorry, guys. Uh, played with NYCFC last year. Also uh, played with Real Salt Lake uh, back with Borgers uh, back in the day. Anyway, let's look at our lineup prediction. So starting off, obviously we have Audi uh, starting at the point of our tech there as our forward striker, whatever you would like to call him in this formation. Out on the wings, we're going to have Lucas Milano. Uh, we'll finally see him in a full starting role this year, which will be nice to see. We'll have Aspria out on the other wing. Uh, had a great goal against FC Dallas. Definitely check that out if you guys get the time. Uh, so that kind of concludes our attacking third in terms of uh, our front three. Uh, looking in the midfield, we have Nagby uh, playing kind of a central midfielder role. We'll have Valeri playing more of a cam-type role, uh, more of an attacking midfielder. We saw Nagby get back on defense more often than not when we were playing in this formation uh, to help Die Diego Chara, <laughs> one of our best players from this last year. Uh, really, Diego Chara over the past few seasons has come into his own as one of the best defensive midfielders middle fielders, midfielders, if I can talk, uh, of MLS. So definitely keep an eye on him, and you know he's one of those guys that gets key fouls and key yellow cards to stop attacks. Um, definitely one of the more annoying players uh, for other squads. We love him to death, though. Uh, starting at our s some guys we know who are going to be there. Ridgewell is, Ridgewell is back uh, from being with Hove Albion, Brighton, yeah, I didn't say that right either. But he was there for a loan spell, spent some time with his kids in England. Great to have him back. Uh, got some good game time as well, so that was really nice. We have Nat Borgers in at the other center back position still. His beard isn't as long, but his beard is still there, and he is still a monster at center back. Uh, we still have Elvis Powell out on... Oh, out on the right-hand side at right back. Uh, he's a guy that has really come into his own, still a great young right back in this league. Expect him to have a breakout season for the Timbers, to say the least. 
also. Uh, uh, well, it, it's really kind of a toss-up who we're going to have a left back. Uh, we could see Jermaine Taylor out there and his experience. We could see uh, Taylor Pay out there. Uh, he's shown some really bright glimpses over the past few years, so that's definitely an option. We could also possibly see Chris Clute out there um, as a defender. Um, being a left back so I'm not sure where we're exactly going to go with that at the start of the MLS season I haven't seen a lot of info on what direction we plan on going uh, mostly because we've been riddled with injuries recently and that's you know normal for us it seems like at the start of MLS seasons however we really need to look into uh, going forward especially once we hit the summer transfer window uh, what our depth is going to be out there uh, at left back and just in our defense in general and how we're going to continue to try to replace that and or fill in our depth chart. So, questions going, well, excuse me, forgot about one of our main stays here in this squad, Adam Quarse in goal. Uh, we got Gleason backing him up, but Adam Quarse will be our starter. Uh, Gosh, the saves he had to keep us in MLS Cup. Or to keep us in the MLS Cup, to keep us uh, on our trajectory through the playoffs was great. And, you know, his communication with Ridgewell and Borgers and just our defense in general has been fantastic. So we are glad to bring Adam back. Adam, we love you as a timber. Thank you. Uh, so, our questions going on for this season. We still have to figure out who's going to replace Viafania at left back. Viafania turned into one of our best players last year in our defense. He was great in tracking people down and definitely getting in front of people uh, to stop people getting out on that left-hand side uh, for us. Problem is, the guy we did have playing left back when we first became a squad with Rodney Wallace is gone. He is one of was one of our more uh, experienced guys. I don't think uh, I don't think we're gonna really have that figured out until about 10, 12 games into the season, really. So we'll have to figure out how, where we go from there. Uh, also, what will be our rotation at the forward striker and wing positions? Uh, you know. McInerney is a great forward uh, for us. He's a solid finisher. Doesn't Not all that flashy, but he gets the job done. Uh, he will definitely be backing up Adi. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go with our winger positions uh, if Esprit or Milano get hurt at this point. But we will definitely have to look into that going forward. Anyway, uh, it, this is looking like it's going to be a good year. I don't expect us to go back and win MLS Cup unless we get hot again, which isn't impossible. But, you know, I, I think we'll make a strong run in the Champions League, for in the CONCACAF Champions League. I think we'll make an okay run through the U.S. Open Cup. So we still have some opportunities to get some trophies this year to add to our MLS Cup of last year. Definitely. Uh, but we'll find out. The parity in MLS continues uh, to be a more difficult thing going forward. So we'll definitely have to uh, fight our way through this long and difficult schedule. And we'll definitely have to uh, add some pieces here and there and definitely see how our young guys play. Definitely see how our young guys play on our T2 squad, possibly bring them up into our first team and uh, where we go from there. But anyway, I am the Analyst32. Thank you for watching. It is great to be back. Fantastic to be back. Uh, you will see more of these Timbers updates. You will see more of the MLS updates, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And we will be going forward, hopefully, uh, looking to make the playoffs again and hopefully another magical run at MLS Cup. So, anyway, have a great one, and uh, I shall see you guys in the next video.